Yo, what's going on, Internet? Welcome to another Deck Tech. This time we're uh, revisiting all the, the classic archetypes. This is actually, you know, in, in your achievements, sacrifice a creature you don't own. So the Rakdos Sacrifice deck. You don't really see this around too often, but, you know, before Duel's Origins drops, I want to at least touch on, you know, all the archetypes. So hopefully, eventually, you know, I will get around to playing some of the the weird shit like the fog decks and the land destruction decks but I want to touch on these real quick so we'll go through the list real quick two quest for the grave lords yeah I know two blood ghast two corpse blockade the the Hakim special he loves this card four devouring swarm two graveborn muse one bane fire two shocks three young pyromancers two Krenko's commands two goblin rabble master Four Act of Treason, four Portent of Betrayal, two Charmbreaker Devils, two Blasting Stations, two Augur Sprees, 24 Lands, 12 Swamps, eight Mountains, and four Rakdos Guildgates disguised as Tri-Lands. So why play this deck? Well, you have your uh, eight Treason effects. You have your four Act of Treasons and your four Portent of Betrayals, which the Portent, you're basically just paying one extra mana for a Scry 1. And then you have your uh, eight sacrifice outlets, your two corpse blockades, four devouring swarm, and two blasting station. So basically, you know, against the mid range decks or the really big bomby decks, you just kill them with your own dude with their own dudes, and then you know you just sacrifice them so they don't get them back. And other ways to take advantage of stuff like. Blasting Station and Devouring Swarm is with stuff like Bloodgast. Since we expect a lot of things to die, I'd top out at two quests for the Grave Lords because, you know, when you aren't stealing their shit and hitting them with it, you still, you know, have to find a way to kill them. So, on that note, two five fives there. The Devouring Swarms over the, what are they, the Blood Flow Connoisseurs. Because even though the blood flow connoisseurs, it actually gets the permanent counters. Like they just don't—they ha don't have evasion, and I think the evasion's a little bit better. And as we kill them with, the game really stalls out. I always like to have one bane fire in decks like this. Young pyromancers, you know, and they can just win the game on their own. Let's count the amount of spells we have: three, five, plus eight, thirteen. So 15 spells for the Pyromancer, so not the not the greatest shell in the world for him, but you know, he's a two drop. And you know, unchecked, he will kill them, and you know, it does have slight synergy with Blasting Station and whatnot. And then of course we all know Rabble Master can win games on his own too. And the tokens from Rabble Master also have synergy with Blasting Station. And even the Devouring Swarm. And then at the end, I actually had a a Storm Breath and an Inferno Titan there at the top end. But I recently switched to the Charm Breaker Devils. One, because it's only a single red. Two, you know, getting back one of these spells. Like, if this thing lives, you untap with this and you get a spell back. Like, you are just in such commanding shape, especially just getting one of these back, which is basically, like, you know, sorcery speed removal if you have one of your enablers. And then, you know, as far as removal spells, you got two Augur Sprees, you know, best Rakdos removal you got. I mean, you don't really have any way to take advantage of the plus four, minus four by casting on one of our guys. But, you know, every now and again, you can steal one of their dudes and then cast that for an extra four damage. Um, so there's really not all, all that much to it. We have the Graveborn Muse for, for card draw, our only card draw. And if you did not notice the course blockade is a zombie so draws an extra card you know you go blockade and the muse you're drawing two cards per turn and because you know we have a lot of sacrifice outlets if the muse ever gets out of hand you have an easy way to get rid of her um this actually used to be four shocks i put in two krenko's commands in place of shocks to you know to make more dudes um it acts like a shock a sorcery speed shock with the blasting station in play and yeah, mostly just to make more dudes. Like, we don't lose out on the spell. And, you know, a little bit more early pressure in the early game. You know, you just don't want to sit there. I mean, sometimes it happens, but... You know, just, just more two drops and 
really in bl in black and red, and especially in this in this kind of archetype, they're not not a whole lot of good two drops. And also, you know, more dudes to feed to a uh, good old Grave Lord here. So let's see what else we got. It's pretty straightforward. I say, you just steal their shit, kill them with it, kill it, and then if that's not going on, find another way to kill them. As far as the lands go, if you look at the color distribution, it's way more red than black, but I actually have, I guess in a way, way more black than red. And the reason for that is our black cards are mostly double black. So, you know, two blood gas, four swarms, two muses. But we don't have any double red cards since we, you know, opted for the Charmbreaker Devils over the Storm Breath Dragon and the Inferno Titan. So, we got 16 black sources and 12 red sources, and you know, it should work out just fine. Especially, you know, if you draw a tap land in your opening hand, you're, for the most part, pretty set. So yeah, pretty, pretty simple archetype. Not the greatest thing in the world, but it is something that exists, and really, the only archetype where I would run all eight of those cards. So, considering, you know, these are not undiscovered archetypes, I'm not gonna sit here and blab forever. Pretty much get the gist of the deck. Thing to keep in mind is, you know, the the ten or less life is actually, you know, pretty relevant with this blood gas and, and this type of deck. So, you know, if you got an opponent at twelve, I mean, you know, you can blow a shock on them, get them down to ten. You know, start giving your blood gas haste, or you know, sacrificing them pre-combat, and then playing a land, and then they come back and they have haste. So, just something to keep in mind. Keep an eye on your opponent's life total. Even though know, it's kind of hard to really burst them down with this, it's a little bit. It's it's not fast. It's it's kind of a slow deck, really. But another reason why I like the course blockades, you know, that one four, like it'll hold down the ground pretty much against any, pretty much most creatures, really. I mean, especially you know if you have something to sacrifice to it, then it gets death touch. Um, I used to have a uh, agent of the fates in here, but he's just a. Uh, was an underperformer, and the reason I had him in here is because at one point, I mean, you can cast a. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, you can cast Act of Treason or Portent of Betrayal on your own dudes to give them haste, or even you know if you desperately need to scry something. Not something that comes up very often, but something you can do. Especially like I don't know, if you're at nine mana, you can <laughs> Charm Breaker Devils and Act of Treason it to have an eight four haste. But you know, you could cast on your own agent, and they'd have to sack a dude. But still, it really wasn't that great. And actually, also at one point, I had the the wombo combo with Burning Anger. So if this ever resolved on an Agent of the Fates, like one, when you target him with Burning An Anger, they have to sacrifice something. And then two, he just deals damage to target creature or player. And it's actually the creature doing the damage. So the Agent of the Fates with Death Touch would basically be able to kill anything. And also could be used with the Quartz Blockade if you had something to sacrifice to it to give it Death Touch. But it's a bit risky plan, so I kind of just got rid of all that and just went with this route. So, anyways, we'll uh, get some games fired up here shortly, and hopefully play a bunch of clunky mid-range decks. I mean, you actually don't have. I mean, as long as you have, you know, a sacrifice outlet and and a treason effect, you're in pretty good shape. You'll eventually get there. I mean, you get to pretty much kill their biggest threat, even something obnoxious that has like an armored ascension on it bane slayer angel doesn't matter but without that the sacrifice outlets like you really can't kill anything above four toughness so just unless like you know have a, a gigantic bane fire or you have the two for one yourself so just keep that in mind all right anyways we'll be back thanks for tuning in later